<laughs> and we're going. I always have to make sure the numbers are actually clicking so we don't do a whole lot. We'll start in child's pose. We'll do a little intro. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's me, Nikki Smith, and our fearless leader, Gina. We are going to do a power class together today for you. We're here at the studio. It's only us. It's so sad. We can't wait to see all of you. We'll be back soon in full effect. But for now, we'll start with a power class. Wait a minute. Are we going to be able to... We're gonna back it up a little because when we stand up, Nikki's taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> taller than me. Um, that would look like the same height. Better, better. That's great. That's better. Yes. Yeah, okay. Important poses they can see us. Okay. Yeah. You get all of it. This yeah, is, this us, is us. for real. We're figuring this out as we go. No, we're just winging it. There we go. So we're gonna do a power class. Gina's going to be offering modifications. I'll be offering modifications. But for now, we'll just all start in child's pose. You don't have me there with you, but Gina gets some hands on. Hands on lovins. Bring the toes together and the knees apart. Extend the arms forward, spread out all the fingers, and tuck your chin into your chest. Remember that if it feels like you're smashing your nose, bring your hairline closer to the mat. I've shared it before, I practiced many, many years smashing my nose, feeling like I can't breathe in child's pose. I knew there had to be a better way. And then one day I just tucked my chin. And that was it. So, breathing in and out through the nose if you haven't started already. And our ever popular Ujjayi breath is always available for you. Slight constriction at the back of the throat on the exhale. And you can practice with the Ujjayi that you're used to, or you could try subtle breathing. This might be a perfect opportunity for you to practice subtle breathing at home where you can bring that practice into the studio when we open back up. Subtle breathing is just a very low, almost inaudible breath. Slow inhale into the belly and a constriction of the abdominals on the exhale. Pulls everything into the center and pushes the air out. At this point, I'll have you tent the fingertips, stretch the arms forward, walk the hands over to the right, stack the left hand on top, opening through the left side body. A really nice side opening stretch. <clears throat> I think I'll do it too. And we'll walk the hands through center, moving with breath over to the other side, left hand, right hand down. If you have kitties and puppies, they're going to want to join in. Just let them. There's no use in fighting it because they're going to be all about the yoga. They always are. <laughs> Bring the hands through the center. Flatten the palms. And let's press forward to modified lion. Hips come forward. Arms stay long. Pull the chest through. Roll the triceps in towards the ribs. And start to windshield wiper the legs. It's always important to warm up the spine, the hips, just everything we're going to be using in our practice. warm in here. There's no AC, but I'm loving it. You guys know I like it hot, so take an inhale. Exhale back to child's pose. Ah. And I'll have you move back and forth a few times there, inhaling forward to modified lion. You can hang out there, or when you're ready, you can exhale back to child's pose. Starting to get the blood flowing and the movement going. From here, we'll press back to down dog. So bring the toes down, lift the hips, pull the belly up and in, and then walk the feet into your traditional down dog position and start to pedal the feet. So it's always good to kind of make your first down dog or any down dog really your own. You can add some organic movement, stretching through the bottoms of the feet. You know, Gina was dropping her hips side to side. She was kind of getting into the shoulder girdle there. That's always recommended. Plus down dog, it feels so good, right? I heard it said called man's best friend is a dog, right? So yogi's best friend is a down dog or breath. I don't know, maybe blocks, I, I don't know. Mm. whatever. <laughs> and so we're gonna lift the hips through here. Remember to roll the triceps away from the ears to broaden through the collarbone. Belly is pulled up and in, ribs are pulled in. Gina has a very well aligned down dog. We've been practicing for years, so. We know what to do. She'll inhale forward to the top of a push-up, high plank. 
Drop the knees down to the tabletop, bring the shoulders over the wrists and start to cat and cow. Two ways you can do this. You can do a fully accentuated cat and cow, which you're used to, you know, a very wide chest and sternum forward on the cow and a very rounded spine. Or you could do a subtle cat and cow, kind of easing the body into your back bends here. As always, we're moving with breath. Oxygen stretches the body from the inside out. And of course, keeps you connected to the practice. Because if you're not really paying attention to breath, it's possible that you're thinking about who knows what. And for now, at least for this hour, we'll just do yoga. All right, from here, neutral spine. We'll inhale the right arm forward, right thumb points up, left leg points back, leg in line with the hip. If you have a mirror to practice, I highly recommend it so you can check out your alignment. If not, don't worry. You won't ruin all your hard work in just a few few short yoga practices at home. But I really want you to extend the right arm forward, really reach the left leg back as if someone's pulling your arm and your leg away from each other. This is a spinal balance, so be sure to take the bend out of your back. I'm guilty of that. We'll inhale here. Exhale, knee to elbow, hold here. We're gonna hold this now, because if we're doing power, one of the elements of power is holds. So we'll hold here, keep pulling the knee up into the chest, try to touch the belly with the top of the thigh. And inhale to extend. Exhale, knee to elbow and hold. From here, left knee is going to come out to the side. Inner thigh is parallel to the earth. Right arm extends. It's kind of like a fire hydrant. It's pretty tough. I'm feeling it. All right. Inhale to the right arm forward, left leg back. Bring the right hand down, cross the left leg over. Stretch through the Achilles, the calf, all the good stuff back there. Very good. Very good. And if you guys were with me for that kettlebell workout, I'm still really sore from all of that stuff, so this feels great. Let's let our right leg slide out to the right. Open the left side up to the corner of the room and breathe. Yeah, it is pretty tough to do this and cue this. <laughs> <laughs> Tougher than I remember. Yeah. From here, we're going right to thread the needle. So the left arm comes down so we can place our left knee under the hip. Left arm threads through. Lots of places you can take this. You can stay right here because this is a nice shoulder stretch. You can extend the right arm up. You can bind the right arm. You can even thread the right arm through the knee. This is my favorite. I like to practice this in a yin way just to kind of let everything acclimate to this position. From here, plant the right palm down and inhale the left arm up. And we'll go right to spinal balance on the left. Left leg goes out, right leg goes back, toes down, thumbs are up. Remember to stay connected to your, your spine here because I always have a curve in my spine, but we're trying to have a nice neutral spine. Take a breath in. Exhale, knee to elbow, and hold. You don't have to hold your breath here because that would be counterintuitive, but do hold the position. Inhale to extend, exhale, knee to elbow. Now we'll do the little fire hydrant. Bring the right knee out to the side, left arm goes to the side, hold for three, two, one. Extend and cross it over. Bring that right heel down. Take some time to marinate in the stretch. And if we're going too fast, you can always take things out or hang out in the stretch longer. You can always pause the video. Isn't that nice? They can pause yeah, us. Yeah, you can pause it. You can pause us You can now. mute it too, but <laughs> you don't know what to do. You can also turn us off. <laughs> yeah. Bring the left leg out to the side and extend the right arm out and open up. Feels good. Really reach the right arm. So we're not just hanging out here. We're reaching. When you reach, all the muscles engage and the stretch deepens. Take an inhale. And exhale, thread the right arm through, four thread the needle. You can do the same thing you did on the other side, or you can change it up. Our sides are different, our moods are different. We have lunar and solar, male and feminine, masculine and feminine, I should say. So each side might look different. And that's okay. One of the things we learn in yoga is to be okay with what is, right? Well, we're trying anyway. <laughs> We're being tested. <laughs> We're being tested right now. I, I can speak for myself. I think I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. But it's only one week into quarantine. Mm -hmm. 
Plant the left arm down, extend the right arm up. Breathe, and we'll take it back to down dog. It is recording, right? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, where's the numbers? I don't have an iPhone, so I'm like, yeah, I don't yeah, see the numbers. Yeah. I checked, trust me, I've done a whole hour, and then it's like, what? <laughs> It might be better to have like two phones running, like just in case a backup phone. Let's extend the right leg up. We don't usually do this facing the mirror, so it's a little weird looking at myself there. Bend the knee to open the hip and start to do some knee rotations. So now that you guys are watching the video, you can see what I mean by this, because sometimes I see just a little like a little baby. Really, really open this up. The top of the femur plugs into the hip like a ball in a socket. So it moves, it's meant to swivel around, change direction. I'm a little off there. Extend the right leg up. Inhale. Exhale, bring the right knee forward. Left knee comes down. And we'll inhale the arms up overhead. Make sure your knee is stacked over the ankle. Then press the top of your left thigh closer to the mat to stretch. Grab a hold of the left wrist and pull it over to the right. Another side body stretch. So my knee always comes in when I do this. Just try to keep it stacked, stay connected. I don't want to be all willy-nilly. Left arm will come down, right arm comes up, inhale, exhale, frame the foot, tuck the back toe and lift the knee, step forward to forward fold. And hang here for a moment. Remember, you can always bring the locks in, bring the floor to you. A bend in the knees is always a welcome, welcome position. For me, now that I've been doing all these workouts with my hamstrings, I don't need to go right to a straight leg forward fold. I like a bend in my knees, kind of ease myself into it. You can grab either elbow, you can pull the forearms towards the tops of the feet, or you can just ragdoll. Nice and easy inhale to a half lift, flat back position. Bring the weight into the toes and bring your shoulders to touch your ears so you know what it feels like to pull them away. Extend the, crimp, the neck, crown of the head towards the top of the mat, take a breath in. And exhale, fold. Inhale, root your eyes, extend the arms to the side. Out and up, exhale, hands to heart center. Close the eyes, you can't see us, but we're still here. They can see us in the mirror. Oh, that's behind. true. I don't know what the heck happened. <laughs> Just close the eyes down and notice your body's response. It's only been about 11 or 12 minutes of practice, but already the heart is racing. You might be sweating. Breathing might be elevated. Try to slow the breathing down. Plant the feet into the ground. Put a slight bend in the knees and feel how grounded and stable you are in this position. The feet plug into the earth to connect to our earth energy and our root chakra, which then brings the energy all the way up through the body, out through the crown of the head to connect us to each other, consciousness and universe. We'll straighten the legs as we inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale, hinge and fold, bring it forward. Ah. Inhale to the half lift. Exhale, plant the palms, step the right foot back, lower the right knee down, and inhale the arms up overhead. Take some time to, to set up your alignment here, stacking the knee, pressing the top of the thigh closer to the mat. Hold on to the right wrist with the left hand and pull it over to the left. Remember to stay connected to what your left knee is doing. We'll inhale, exhale to frame the foot. We're going right to three-legged dog. So the back knee lifts and the left leg extends to the sky. Ah, bend the knee and start your very nice and generous knee rotations. Change directions. Extend the left leg up, inhale. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, eight point salute, which is bringing the knees down, bending the elbows, bring the chest between the thumbs and the chin comes down. The farther away from your chest your knees are, the less intense the back bend. So if you want a deeper back bend, you can walk the knees closer. You might not need that, but if you're a back bend person, then there's your modification. From here, bring the belly all the way down, fingertips in line with the shoulders, inhale up to Cobra. Remember, we're not throwing our neck back, we're pressing the back of our head towards our glutes, bringing the chest through, and trying not to 
exhale all of the breath. It's about 80% that we hold the breath, so only 20% of your breath is going out. It seems really mathematical, but eventually it makes sense. Just go with it. Let's inhale a little bit. Exhale, lower down. Then you can do a push-up or roll over the knees back to down dog. And as with any class, those chaturangas or those vinyasas are optional. So we'll do another one here with the chaturanga. Inhaling forward to high plank. Chaturanga, elbows stack over the wrists as you lower down. Press it up to cobra. And back to down dog. And take five breaths here, inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Maybe walking the feet a little closer to the hands to bring the heels down. It's not necessary. Don't worry if your ankles are not allowing the heels to connect with the earth. It's not what makes a down dog great. From here, we will step the feet a little closer so our right hand can reach for our left ankle. And we'll look under the armpit here. Now you can stay here or you can practice. You can take the balance challenge by trying to extend the right leg back. The trick with that is leaning your weight to the left as if you're gonna fall over to the left and then you're able to extend the right leg back. Maybe. This is just an option. But you're in the comfort of your home, so now maybe you have the courage to practice things you won't make a fool of yourself with at the studio. <laughs> Don't worry, we're all thinking it. Bring the right foot down, right hand forward, and we'll switch. You could easily skip the balance and just enjoy this twist here. I can feel it on my lower back back of my right leg, all the way up into my right arm as well. For the balance challenge, you'll need to look down. Look down to ground, then maybe you can extend the left leg back. You can see I have my body weight over to the right to balance out this balance challenge. Bring the left foot down, back to down dog. If you want another vinyasa, here's your chance. Take a vinyasa, we're gonna skip it. Well, Gina might do it, but I'm skipping out of it. Gina's gonna do it. Don't look for all of them. I'll do a few of them. Okay. <laughs> we'll try to all do them, but yeah. you don't really need a vinyasa demo. Oh, I hope not. Mm -hmm. But if you do, you can. There it is. There it is. Okay. <laughs> there it was. Okay. Right leg. Let's go right leg high. Woo! There was my crack. Uh, we're coming to high crescent lunge. So right foot will come forward. Inhale the arms up overhead. Back foot is at a 90 degree angle with the, the floor. Knee is stacked. And we'll extend the left arm forward and the right arm back, trying to keep the hips squaring forward. So we don't want to go a whole twist here. The twist comes from the upper body. The challenge is to keep the hips square. Let's sink a little deeper into our crescent. And bring the left arm down to the outside and the right arm up. Now this is asking a lot of your piriformis, your glutes, all these back here. So if you like, you can bring the hands to prayer or you can keep the extension. We'll come back to our twist with an inhale. Exhale to sink in. Inhale the right arm up. And then bring the right arm back as you exhale to the outside of the left thigh. And find the back bend here. This is just an option. You can hold your crescent if you don't like this. I won't know, so I won't mind. <laughs> and the left arm will come down now. Inhale the right arm up for another twist. And we're coming right to our side plank. So look back at your left foot. Maybe step it into the middle. Drop the edge of your left foot down. Now you can bring your right hand down to support this transition as you stack the right foot on top of the left. So you can't see us. I'll do a modified knee down. She has the knee down, but you can't see from this angle. She's gonna change it here. There you go. We've got side plank here. You can also keep the foot down if you like. It's all good. Here, side plank, the other way with the modification. You can you also <laughs> you pick it. <laughs> you can also grab the toe here. You're still holding side plank. Hold See? that side we're plank. Doing, Don't you drop that We're side doing plank. power. Oh my goodness, I we're know you're power. coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so we're in our side plank. We're back to high plank. If you want a vinyasa, here's your chance. Otherwise, press it back to down dog. Whew. We're feeling it. It's hard to talk in do the same time. I'm gonna back this up just a little bit. We're so backing we, it up. When we get a little more of us when we're standing. That's the beauty of two of us here. <laughs> we're still here. Hold that down, Rob. All right. 
<laughs> Let's take a deep breath in, hold this breath. Subtle exhale through the nose. Inhale the left leg high. Exhale, high crescent lunge. Bring it through, sink it in. Bring right arm forward, left arm back. Make sure your knee doesn't track into the center. And then right arm will come down to the outside of the left knee or hands to prayer, yogi's choice here. And we'll inhale the arms back up overhead. And then it's left arm to the outside of the right thigh and the right arm comes back for a back bend. Bring the right arm down and the left arm up. Inhale. Exhale to hold. Now we're ready for that side plank. So we look back at the feet to set up our foundation. You start from the feet and you work your way up. Then you can stack or you can bring the knee down. It's Yogi's choice. Make sure your shoulder stacks over your wrist. And then use the lower hip to support the upper hip here. See a lot of jumping hips in a side plank. We want to elevate that, pull everything in, a nice tight side plank. We're ready for down dog. Did you make him hold it as long? They didn't, you guys didn't hold it as long, so hold pause. Hold it one more second. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and down dog or vinyasa yogi's choice. Let's walk or hop to the front of the mat. Exhale as you fold. We'll go ahead and do a basket weave here. So bend the knees, chest to thighs, arms come out to the side and wrap around to grab the opposite shin. Basket weave. Let the crown of the head be heavy. You can keep a bend in the knees here or you can straighten the legs if you're ready for all that. And you might not be ready for that at all today and that's okay. Remember to honor the body. Don't force it into anything it's not ready for. We're here to create pleasure and comfort through the practice of yoga, not pain and discomfort. Inhale to a half lift, undo the basket weave. Exhale to fold. Inhale, roots rise. And exhale, hands to heart center, close the eyes down and catch your breath. <laughs> Little do you know, this is also an opportunity for, our, for us teachers to catch our breath. You stay there at the front. Okay, I'll stay at the top of the mat. There we go. A little tiny angle here. That's what we needed. There she is. <laughs> it really is Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a body standing. <laughs> All right, there we are. If you like, you can practice the Lotus Mudra, which is the heel of the palms coming together, thumb and pinkies to touch. This opens the heart and the crown chakra. And if you want to know more about that, well, it's for another time. But I'll tell you about it later. I'll type something up for you. Let's take an inhale, the arms up overhead. Exhale, hands through center, fold. Ah. If your eyes are still closed, you can open them now. We'll inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. If you like to jump back, you're welcome to jump back. Gina and I will be stepping back. That's just our preference. You can vinyasa here or we'll meet in down dog. Ah. All right, let's do it again. Right leg high. Exhale, crescent lunge. Step it through to the top of the mat. This time, right arm forward, left arm back. Hold. Inhale the arms up. Bring the left knee almost to touch the mat. Hold here. And lift and lengthen that left leg. Inhale, left arm forward, right arm back. Hands will come to prayer for crescent prayer twist. So one thing I like to do is like to anchor my leg down, pull my arm over, and then I can bring the hands to prayer. Create a straight line from wrist, forearm, and elbow. Now we're gonna be stepping forward to a chair twist. If you like the balance challenge, you know you're just trying to bring your weight into the right foot to extend the left leg back. Good thing these are here. Otherwise, we'll just step the feet forward, meet in chair twist. Now, if you have an arm balance, you're welcome to do that here. I mean, this is a power class. 
So do you want to demo? Side, uh, side crow? Side crow. Okay. Gina's going to demo while I hold. Okay, so from the chair, we're just going to drop the palms, align them up with the shoulders, come up high on the tippy toes, elbows bend, trot around on the arms. Set the thigh bone on the backs of the arms, walk the toes out, little side crow here. You can just let the toes come up, maybe fall back down. If you can manage it, separate the feet. Lovely. And then with control, land it back. We'll end up back in our chair twist either way. Chair twist. Inhale, keep the hands in prayer, arms come up overhead. Exhale, switch over to the left leg. Hold here. We'll have an opportunity for that side curl on the other move when we do the left leg, but for now, we're just going to hold here. Take some time aligning your chair. Inhale the arms up through prayer. Exhale back over to the right. Another opportunity for that balance challenge by just extending the left leg back. I think it's easier to get into this from the front it to is. the back. It was so much easier. So much easier, but hey, that's what we're here for. Figuring stuff out together. Step the left foot back. Inhale the arms up overhead, crescent lunge. Exhale, vinyasa here, or meet us in down dog. I guess I better do one, right? Well, you do one, it's your turn. <laughs> My shoulders don't like chaturangas anymore, so if you see me skipping them, I've got my reasons. We can boycott our down dogs. I mean, our vinyasa. <laughs> our vinyasa. Down dogs. Left leg high. Exhale, crescent lunge. <sighs> Left arm forward, right arm back. We're switching up the twist. Hips are still square. Knee is still stacked. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, crescent prayer twist. Oh, we forgot to lower the knee down. Well, well, we can do that now. There we go. Lower the knee down, hold. Look at that. Rewind. Okay. There we go. <laughs> and lift and lengthen. And now we'll twist. All right, from the back to the front, the hard way. Maybe you step the foot in a little bit. Yeah. And then you can lift the leg. Find the spot to look at on the ground. Press your knee and elbow together. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And chair twist, we're ready, yay. And here's your opportunity for side crow. So I'll demo this side. Oh, perfect. Elbow to knee, elbow to hip, create a shelf with the backs of the arms. Fingertips pointing forward. Lean your weight into the elbows, really. And maybe you just stay right here. Maybe you're just in a prep pose. Maybe you lift the feet up, maybe you extend. All right. Back to chair twist, inhale the arms up. Exhale, twist to the other side. Whoa. Inhale, the arms up. And exhale, twist. All right, now the easy way. I wouldn't say it's easy, just easier. Remember to bring your weight into the left foot. Extend the right leg back. I'll go easy. And crescent lunge, inhale, the arms up. Exhale, vinyasa here. I'll do this one. We'll do it. She'll do it. And back to down dog. Five breaths in down dog. Grab some water or whatever you got going on. <laughs> yeah, they could be drinking anything. For beverages. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we don't know what you guys have in your mugs here. Mm -mm. <laughs> don't want to know. Don't want to know. Okay, let's walk around. Hop, hop to the front of the mat, coming into malasana. So it's yogi squat. Heels in, toes out, hold here. Use the elbows to separate the knees. Sit up nice and tall. Base of the spine is close to the earth, so this is very grounding. Close the eyes, take a few breaths here. If you have a block, you can always sit on the block. You can't really see, you can see me there. Because you're still getting the inner thigh stretch, the ankle stretch, you're still getting all the work without having to hold yourself up if you're not used to malasana yogi squat. If you want to fly, you're welcome to do that. I'll demo the version with the knees on the outside of the triceps. Mm -hmm. Toes come in. I'm, I'm hugging my knees into my triceps and it's kind of like, I kinda, it's more like a frog to me. I feel like this is more froggy than crowy, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but that's how I learned crow. So it's one of the ways you could do it. You could also practice from standing on a block and then going into crow, which I'll demo here while Gina holds this Squat, might as well. I mean, we got time. Hanging out, loving your squat. Yeah, I love squat. Mm -hmm. 
What was that article that we're supposed to be squatting all the time that you read? It's all the time. Like, you know, squat in all the time. where they squat to eat and other things, they have healthier spines, healthier hips. There you go. So, there you go. Dig a hole in the backyard and start squatting. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> maybe we're just leaning forward. Maybe just take one toe off. Maybe the other toe. Maybe you just alternate toes. Maybe you just do a little toe stamp here. Or maybe you bring the toes in, create a little triangle, and you're in your curl. There's the demo. I'm still trying to catch my breath. This is pretty tough, but I'm feeling okay. All right, talking through. <laughs> Let's take squatty for a walk. Walk the palms forward. Keep the knees pointing in the direction of the toes. And maybe like shimmy here. I like to feel the stretch of the muscles surrounding the spine. This is a good way to access that. Walk the palms back. Left arm will come out to the side. Use the elbow to press the knee out. Bring the right arm up, inhale. Hands to prayer, switch. Hands to prayer, and forward fold. Bring the palms down, toes forward, heels back. You can have the feet wide, you can have the feet under the hips, whatever feels good for you right now. Maybe shake the head no a few times to release the neck, and yes. So here we will in, we'll bring the feet together to touch. It's a little bit different, but it's still okay. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift to rise. And exhale, hands to heart center. Standing bridge pose. Right foot will step directly in front of the left. You may want to have your blocks on either side of the feet because this is a pretty intense stretch for the back of the legs if you're not used to it. All right. So we'll inhale the arms up overhead. Also, another trick here is to stretch the right foot forward and the left foot back creates a lock. And then we fold. Exhale, hinge and fold. Maybe the hands come down to the blocks. Maybe they come down to the floor. Maybe use the blocks to bring your elbows to the blocks. Just depends on what your legs are wanting to do today. Lovely. <clears throat> Hold. Hello, weird. <laughs> We're hearing voices. <laughs> They're really next door. Yeah. <laughs> Inhale, half lift. Now you can choose to go back to that stretch or I have another balance challenge for you. Left hand will come down to the right foot. Right foot hand will come on top of that. Now we're not looking down. We're actually keeping the shoulders in line with the hips. And instead of looking through the legs, we're looking about six inches in front of the feet. So it's a lot like our half lift. Another balance challenge still, lean the weight forward and extend the left leg back. It's just like a modified standing split here. Have you done this before, Gina? No, well, I think I've had it in your class. Oh, okay. I've got my fingers spread out to help me, so that's a modification. So there's your modification. Yeah. I've got the balance, she's got the, thumb the support. On, each thumb on the foot and then the fingers out like little kickstands. And what we're coming into is our pyramid pose. So if you can, bring the hands down to the block or floor. Left foot will come back about three or four feet, and maybe just heel toe the right foot over. Mine is in the center of the mat. It's okay, you can make adjustments. No one said you had to land in the pose. You're in a half lift. You can also bring your back heel in if that's more comfortable for you, and then you'll fold into your pyramid, whatever depth is appropriate for you today. Pyramid pose. Side view She's got the side view. I'm kind of just hanging out. Hmm, tight hammies. Tight hammies. Have you been working out at home? Not, not particularly. I'm just doing videos. <laughs> yeah. A little yard work the other day. That might be it. All right. We're inhale, half lift here for your revolved pyramid. You can have the hand on the inside of the foot or the outside of the foot. So left hand outside or inside of right foot. Maybe a higher block if you're experiencing okay. having to reach and the right arm can come up. Now what I've been doing with my, my block here, I've been turning my fingers in the same direction as my gaze. It's just more comfortable for my wrist. I'm always looking for more comfort without um, jeopardizing my alignment. And we'll fold it in. Now everybody's favorite, lift the right foot up and drop the toes to the right. 
Now, no cheating here. I want you to continue to flex the toes. Keep bringing the toes towards the body, which is gonna keep that stretch engaged. Bring your blocks over to the outside of the right foot and let the left toes twist to the same direction that you are in. Now, I've got the edges of my feet down, which you can't see, but if you can, try to bring your toes down as well. So we've got all the toes touching the earth, and if you need to, you can shorten the distance of the crisscross. If you want more, walk the blocks out and press back like down dog. Ooh, it's a lot. I know I need it. We can get rid of laying on the couch watching Netflix for too long. Just <laughs> stretch to stretch out your Netflix butt. <laughs> That's the truth of it. And we're coming around to a wide leg fold in the other direction. So just walk the blocks if you've got them, or walk your hands over, toes in, heels out, wide leg fold. Now we are doing power yoga, so if you want to do a headstand of any sort, you're welcome to do that. I will demonstrate a traditional headstand with um, a cradle grip. So my hands will come to clasp. I will bring my hands down to support the crown of my head like so. So the crown of my head is still touching and this is this for me this is more supporting the upper back of my head. You will walk the feet in, start to lift the legs. Oh it's been a while. It's been a long time but here you go. Actually I wasn't sure if I could do it. It's been so long. So you can stay here, you can come down, you can spread the legs, you can get fancy. That's up to you. Do it against the wall if you're not used to practicing it. By the time we come back to the studio, it'll be headstanded. Woo! There you go. And there you go. For now, we're catching our breath here in this pose. I always like a wide leg fold. We'll inhale, half lift. Bring the left hand down over the face and the right arm up. Try to keep the hips square. You can intensify this pose by binding the right arm behind you to grab the inner left thigh or just touching. You'll fold forward towards the mat. Bring the left hand to the right foot. Maybe your elbow comes down and you twist. That's just an option. Remember to breathe. Everyone will take an inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Right arm will stay down and the left arm will come up. I'm going to take it into the twist. Inhale and exhale. And now Gina's going to walk it out to a down dog, wide leg down dog, from right where she is. Yes, because we're going to do a wide leg vinyasa here. Since you're at home alone, there's room for you to do it. Inhale, high plank. Hold. <laughs> there you go. She's in the shot. She's going to chaturanga to a low plank and hold. I tricked her. I'm <laughs> just kidding. You guys are holding. She can go down if she wants. She's pretty strong though, so she's lowering down, but you guys are still holding for five, four, three, two, one. As you are, up dog right here. Just lift everything off the mat besides the tops of the feet. Feels good. Pull the shoulders back, chest through. Inhale. Exhale, lower down. You can do a push up or roll over the knees back to down dog. And we'll walk it around to a high plank towards the front of the mat. So just walk it around, walk it around. You could vinyasa here and we'll all meet in child's pose. Child's pose, that's about 40 minutes. That's about a good time for a child's pose in the middle of a flow. Child's pose is a great way to reconnect with your breath, settle everything in. One of the things you can do is bring the hands to prayer, bend the elbows and bring the thumbs to the back of the neck. Then walk the elbows more forward and drag back. It's a great tricep stretch. <sighs> Don't worry, for all my core people, we will do some core in just a few minutes. We're going to do a few more standing poses. We've got to get some warriors in there. You've got to have the traditional yoga. It's been around for a while for a reason. But I'm going to give Gina a few more moments to breathe. In and out through the nose, I hope. My nose is kind of stuffy. Allergies have been real fun. 
during this time of not touching your face. Um, but thankfully, I've got what it takes, <laughs> as in eye wash and eye drops and stuff like that. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. You guys know me, I'm always like off on 100 million tangents when I'm teaching. That's what you love. Just be in me. All together, let's take a deep breath in. Inhale, hold the breath at the top. For old time's sake, exhale through the mouth. We'll press it forward into a down dog. So we lean, lift the head, we press forward, tuck the toes, and come back. Let's go right leg high with a deep breath in. Exhale, warrior two. Remember it's heel to heel alignment. Right foot parallel to the edge of the mat. Left foot parallel to the back of the mat. Shoulders are relaxed down the back, but still engaged. So this is a, a, an action pose. We're firing up the pose. We're reaching the arms forward. We're stacking the knee over the ankle. We're really trying to fire up the inner right thigh. We're gonna rotate so that they can- We're gonna rotate. rotate. Yeah, I'll rotate. And then we'll rotate back if we need to, but that way you can see. I've got right foot forward, left leg back. There we go. There we go. That's what she's talking about. What she's talking about. <laughs> there it is. Ah. And we're gonna bind the left arm behind the back and find our peaceful warrior, so our right arm will come up. Lovely. And then it's a bound, half, a half bound side angle, so right arm will come through, either to rest on the knee, or you can bring it down to the floor or a block, yogi's choice. With this half bind, you're able to open to the shoulder. Be careful what you do with your neck. You don't wanna be looking all the way up here. It's kind of a janky position for the cervical spine. Ideally, you want the head in the same direction as the spine. So we're really more looking out this way. Now I'll extend our side angle by bringing the left arm up and over, bring the bicep over the left ear and hold. And we're coming into our reverse triangle. So we're straightening the right leg, inhaling the body up and back, left arm comes down or bind, right arm comes up, reverse triangle which will set us up for our triangle pose next. So we reach the right arm far forward and we bring it down. Great place for a block on the inside of the right leg. If you like, you can have a block here. I've been using a block in my triangle just because I like to stack the shoulders and keep my awareness attached to the rib cage here. Belly's pulled in. Edge of the left foot is pressing down into the mat and we're breathing. Regina's gonna stay here. I'm gonna come in front of her while I demo a deeper variation of a triangle pose. We have triangle here. You can also grab a hold of the right thigh or calf or something on the right, the left leg. And we're bringing our left arm up and over. If you can grab your feet, great. But try to keep your shoulder on the inside of the knee. And then we have a really nice side opener here. Okay, bend the right knee to come out of your triangle back to warrior two. Cartwheel the arms down. You can take a vinyasa or a medium down dog. Yogi's choice. Lovely. And we're gonna do that on the other side so it's left leg high. Exhale, warrior two. And she's gonna turn it around so she's facing you guys. <laughs> Lovely. Again, this back foot is pressing down. The ankle is pressing down to the mat. Side of the foot is flat. Left knee is stacked over the ankle, toes visible on the inside of the knee. Shoulders are stacked over the hips, you don't want to be leaning too far forward or too far back. We'll bind this right arm behind the back, flip the left palm, peaceful or reverse warrior. Lovely. And we'll come into our half bound side angle, either elbow to knee or hand to the inside of the floor or block. Yogi's choice. And then we're ready to extend. So right arm will extend up overhead, bicep comes over the ear for extended side angle. Create a line of energy from the ankle to the wrist and on. To infinity and beyond, and right? Beyond. I had to get my little Disney plug in there. Yeah. <laughs> And we're ready for a reverse triangle. So we're straightening up out of the left leg. Right arm comes down the back or bind Yogi's choice. And we have our reverse triangle here. Take a few breaths here. Enjoy the stretch. 
And then we'll reach the left arm out over the left foot, coming into our triangle pose. So the right hip just back, left arm comes down to the floor or block. You could even rest it on your shin. And right arm will come up. Shoulders are stacked here. Beautiful. Lovely. Of course, you have the other option where the left arm grabs the right leg and the right arm comes up and over. All right, bending into the left knee to come out of this. Warrior two. Cartwheel the arms down, back to either down dog or vinyasa here. Running out of opportunities to vinyasa, so if you want to grab one, here's your chance. And we'll drop the knees down, back to child's pose. Ah. So maybe we'll angle this down because we're going to do floor work now. There's my thumb. Is that good, do you think? I think so. All right. All right. So we're in child's pose. Just rest here for a moment. We'll do some core work and then we'll do some stretches and then we will shavasana. So take a deep breath in and exhale. Start to walk the palms back by the knees. Bring the knees together, bring the hands down on top of the thighs and just take a few minutes to ground or a few breaths to ground here. Close the eyes. You'll inhale through the nose and you'll exhale through the sits bones. Just imagine the exhale is going down through the earth like a root to anchor you to the center of the earth. The grounding core that you can create just by way of the breath. Take one more breath in and exhale. Bring the palms down, slide the legs out to the side, grab a block. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not going to do anything too crazy. But we are going to bring up the block between the knees and hold and then lift the feet up. So if you want to cross the ankles here, you can do that. It's kind of just like a boat pose. This will actually help keep your legs engaged. Remember that you want a straight spine. We don't want you rounding into this. You want a straight spine, bring your hands to the side if you must, or if you want. Just I'll do the gentle. gentle. She'll do the gentle, and I'll do the Did you catch that? Intense. <laughs> She'll do the gentle, I'll do the intense. You're just gonna hold this pose for a few breaths. Hope you're feeling that. Shaking. Woo -hoo. Shaking. Woo -hoo. Bring the hands for out to the outer edge of the left knee, and we're just doing some modified mason twists. Oh yes, or I think we call them Russian twists. I've heard them called all sorts of things. All I know is my core is engaged, and yours will be too. Our, our inner thighs, even all the way down to the feet, are connected to the abdominal. If you got your feet crossed, switch the crust. Switch the cross. Yeah. Thank right. you, Gina. Yeah. I Me, you. I would have just done a second set. I know. <laughs> Keep going for five, four, Three, two, one, extend the arms up overhead. Oh. Grab the block. High boat. High boat. Low boat. I'll stay high. She'll I'm stay gonna high. Go, I'm gonna go modify. I'm going low. Extend the arms up overhead and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Everyone will lower down. Uh, That'll do. <sighs> Bring the feet together, point the toes. Bring the arms. Up overhead, interlock the fingers, release index fingers like the Charlie's Angels gun. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, sit up and reach for the toes. Forward fold. Ah. If you are feeling extra flexy today, you can always introduce a block. You could bring it to the soles of the feet for a deeper stretch. You could even bring it to the, the edge of the block here. Just kind of, you know, honoring the body. If this is a strain for you to reach, or if you lose the integrity in the lower back, you don't need the block. You don't even need to reach for your feet. Mm -hmm. You can just be right here. If you feel a stretch in the back of your legs here, great. I say stay right there. But you do want to feel something, so hang out in your forward fold for a few more breaths. And we'll inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale the hands down for stack pose. So fingertips will point forward. Heels of the palm press in, arms lengthen. We're sitting up nice and tall. If you want to practice lifting, you can do that. 
Are you gonna do it? I'm just. <laughs> She's doing it. She got her hips up. Nice. <laughs> my booty's off the ground. And maybe your feet come off the ground. I don't know. I always, for me, I think my arms are, are not long enough. So I kind of have to angle onto the this part of my palm. And then I can kind of get the lift I need. There you go. Um, but you can play around with that. And maybe that's not good for my wrist. I don't know. Just take take it easy. Whatever you do. Yeah. Okay, from here, injured. we've got more core work to do. So... Bring the hands to the side, bring the knees up. Feet are in line with the knees, we're holding here. Lean back slightly, extend the legs forward, and we're doing crunches. Just modified bow crunches. You can do this hands free. You can do this with weights. Let's do it with baby ones. Do some, get, grab some weights, girls. I'm a little baby bow. <laughs> I'm the dinghy. <laughs> I'm the dinghy. I'm gonna do it with the baby ones. For five, don't feel long. four, three, two, and one. Ah, bring the soles of the feet together. And we're ready for butterfly pose. So remember, you can hold on to the ankles, you can hold on to the feet. Sitting up nice and tall, lower ribs towards the heels of the feet. Hold into your butterfly. I'm sweating now. Good. <laughs> I'm sweating. All right, coming up, we'll do one more forward fold before we bring it back onto our backs. Extend the legs forward. Inhale the arms up overhead, and exhale, fold. Let's bring it all the way back. We'll come down onto our backs. Make sure you're sitting in the middle of the mat. Bring it down. Ah. <laughs> uh, bring the sole of the left foot down. Bring the right leg up. Tuck the chin into the chest. Hold on to the leg and pull it toward you. Now you can stay right here. This is a yummy stretch. If you want to fire up the core and get a nice uh, C curve in the back, you bring the forehead towards the knee and hold. Lower the head back down and bring that leg out to the side. If you have a strap, great. If you don't, no worries. Play around with what you want this left leg to be. Maybe it's down. Maybe you have a half butterfly. This is a really deep hip opener. Maybe the left leg is just extended. Play around with it. See what you like. I know a lot of you out there love your hips to be opened up. So that would be a half butterfly. The leg extended to this side. And from here, left leg will lengthen, right leg comes up overhead. If you have a strap, great. If not, you can do it without the strap. Edge of the foot towards the top of the ceiling, or towards the ceiling, and pull it over. Now you can let your right hip come up here. Personally, I like to keep my right hip down and then pull the leg from there, but that's just personal. And now our right foot will cross over the left knee. We'll reach the arms through, and you're in a reclined pigeon pose. Remember to tuck the chin into the chest. We don't want our chin way up here. And tuck it into the chest. A couple things you can do to deepen this pose. You can bring the heel down towards the hip and pull this towards you. You can hold on to your left leg in some fashion and push the right knee out. You might not need all this. I remember when I first started practicing yoga here at the studio, I did it all. I went as far into the poses as I could go. No, you know, I think I just, I take what I need. <laughs> and that's enough. And I'll tell you what, I don't have any pain in my body. So consider that. If you're experiencing a lot of pain after or from your yoga practice, you might be doing it a little bit too hard. Back it down. Back it down a bit. And trust me, it took me many years to be okay with that. From here, right foot will come over to the side. We're in a spinal twist. Extend the arms to the side. 
that's the beauty of yoga, learning how to balance effort and ease, mm -hmm. when to go hard and when to soften. Can you soften in a pose? Can you soften in your practice? Can you soften in life? Mm -hmm. I'm an Aries, I'm a Pitta, I have a lot of energy. I just have a lot of fire, but you know what? I was burning myself out and it just wasn't necessary. So now you know, I like to balance things out mm -hmm. and yoga is my happy place where I can do these poses, put my body in these sacred shapes, get the stretch, get the breath, get connected, get grounded, and then go out and be a nicer person <laughs> in the world. Because oh, if everybody would just do yoga. <laughs> yeah. If I can do it, you can do it. Let's take a deep breath in. And exhale, release. Uh, we'll, we'll bring the feet down. Let's take a little baby bridge here to reset the lower back. Left leg will come up. Tuck the chin back into the chest and bring the leg towards you. Remember, you can stay right here or you can bring the fourth up towards the knee and pull. And lower down, left leg will come out to the side with the strap or without the strap. Right knee can stay pointing up, left right knee can, or leg can extend, or you can be a half butterfly here. And then right leg will go long, left leg comes up overhead, edge of the left foot angles towards the ceiling, and we'll bring the left leg over, maybe left arm extends to the side. Remember, hip up, hip down, you explore what you like best here. Oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't do the left side. We didn't do pyramid or standing bridge. We didn't? Or the IT thing. Jesus. Oh my gosh. Guys, go we back. The side. <laughs> oh my oh my God. God. I don't know how, like, I totally skipped that left side. I wonder if they noticed. Somebody had to notice. They, they can't tell us. No. <laughs> they hey, usually hey, have to remind hey. us. <laughs> uh, we'll find the minute that that is in and then just go back and do it on the left side, okay? okay? There you go. The beauty of YouTube and pausing and stuff. Okay, left leg goes up, cross it over the right knee, and you're in reclined pigeon. You would think I would have caught it. That's I weird. Know. None of us. Where were we? It seems reasonable to me. <laughs> Uh, me too. That's so funny. I was like, wait. I was thinking about Usually the IT. I think of it at night. Like, yeah. I was like, hey, oh my god, I didn't do that side. Crazy. See, we need you guys as much as you need us. We need you here to keep us in line. <laughs> Everything's going to fall over to the right. Left ankle stays crossed over the right knee. Edge of the right leg is down on the mat. And left knee will point up towards the ceiling for this twisted root. I think that's what this is, right? Yeah. I think it's just twisted roots. And arms are extended, chin is tucked. Just relax and breathe into this twist. So there's lots of ways to do a spinal twist. This I would say is more for the hips than it is for the spine. If you want more spinal twist, you can just uncross the leg and stack the knees and bring them over to the side. You can also look up some other variations of spinal twist. You want something different? Let's take a deep breath in and exhale. We'll uncross the legs. Take another baby bridge and then happy baby. Edges of the feet come up. Grab a hold of the edges of the feet. I am not doing that towards. <laughs> <laughs> See, I already knew I was changing directions. Uh, that was funny. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't oh, do it either. What the heck? <laughs> We might get more views. I don't want, <laughs> oh, I don't want views for the wrong no, reasons. No, we don't either. Exactly. That way. No, we don't. Souls of the people come together, recline, butterfly. You can create a mudra here from thumb to thumb, uh, finger to pointer finger to pointer finger. It's a little triangle. It'll go right below your navel. This will help to ground down your water and earth elements in the body, which will help you feel grounded and secure emotionally. Instead of being carried away with the waves of of the tides. Take a deep breath in and exhale. And then any final movements you need, or if you want to just do all that over again, remember to go back and find the minute. We'll, we'll post the minute for that one part. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, take your savasana and try not to skip it. Even if you're at home and you're like, all right, I'm done. I did my yoga. I got kids to feed and laundry to finish. 
Just try to take at least two minutes here for your Savasana. Do that for yourself. <clears throat> if this is your only moment of stillness in the day, do it for yourself, do it for your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit. And I promise you won't regret just a few minutes of quiet and stillness. And if you like, you can pause the video here for a longer Savasana. But I'll go ahead and pull you out of the Savasana here. So we'll start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. I like to open these ones with this a few times, rolling the wrist around. We'll inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale through the mouth. I've been liking to bring my feet down first and then pull the knees into the chest. But you can pull them directly into the chest if that's your style. You can roll side to side a few times if it feels good before rolling to either side. Take a few breaths in your fetal pose. And as you're ready, press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Uh, nice and tall, shoulders will stack over the hips. All together, we'll do some grounding breaths to finish our practice. So hands come down on the thighs. Like before, we inhale through the nose and we'll exhale down into the earth. So we'll do it all together here. Inhale through the nose. Exhale to ground down. Inhale through the nose. Exhale to ground down. And one more breath. And ground down. Hands come together in front of the chest. The light in me sees, honors, and loves the light in you. Namaste. 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 Thanks, guys. Thanks, Gina. We'll I wanted to collaborate, so we did that today, and we'll be back. We'll yeah. see you soon. We'll keep coming. Bye, yogis. Bye. Have a good day. Stay positive. And that's one hour. We did it. Yes. Well, and you even have that bonus side that you can do. Yeah, <laughs> see?